Welcome back to House of Who. Today I've got a little bit of a different video for you all. So I'm going to be doing a walkthrough on my parents' new camper. So what exactly is this camper? It's built by a company called Tommy Campers. They're located in Ballarat, which is good because it's nice and local to us. So it wasn't very far for us to go and pick it up. So the difference between this and your typical normal canopy is the fact that it's got an inbuilt bed into it as well as a section in the rear which is designed for basically a living quarters so if the weather gets really bad you can just hop in there and get away from all the elements. Now I probably should have done this video when we first picked up the camper because we bought it as almost a bare bones basic with only a couple of extras on it but unfortunately I wasn't doing YouTube videos then so let's get into it now. So Tommy Campers actually offer a few different versions of this camper. So they offer what they call the S4, which is designed for dual cab utes. And it's roughly 1850 long, not including the bed, obviously. So that's perfect for basically any dual cab on the market. Then they offer what they call the S6. Now this is designed for extra cabs or space cabs, whatever you want to call it. And they are roughly 2100 long. And then you've got this. So this is what they call the S8. Now the S8 is 2400 long and it's designed for single cab utes. So this one is going on uh, my parents 80 series, which is right behind the camera right now, which is why I'm pointing to it. And what we've done is basically turned the wagon into a single cab ute and we've extended the wheelbase by 400 mil and put a nice tray on it designed to suit the camper and everything like that. But I digress, I should not keep talking about that. If you wanna see a video on that 80 series, let me know, drop a comment below and I'll probably do a walkthrough on that one. But getting back to the camper, so this is a S8, uh, which is the largest option that they offer. Now they also offer a couple of in-between options. So they offer an S4 with an extended rear on it. So basically that just makes it a bit easy to get in and out. Um, it makes it a bit longer on the backside. And they also offer that same option on, uh, for the S6. So basically what they do is they use the S6 roof of the canopy on the S4, and then obviously the S8 roof on the S6 model. Unfortunately, they don't make an S10 roof to throw on the S8 model, but the S8's pretty big as it is, so I don't think it really needs it. Now, as for the construction of the camper, most of it is three mil aluminium, and there are some braces inside that are like two mil aluminium, but the majority is three mil. And as you can see by all of these bolts, it is bolted together. Now, a lot of people would probably worry about a camper or a canopy being bolted together, but honestly, it's nothing to worry about. So it's not just the bolts that hold it together, they also use silicon or Sikaflex, whatever it is that they use, between the panels as well. So between that and the bolts, which they use obviously nylock nuts, and they use stainless hardware as well. So stainless bolts, they kind of knurl up and they generally don't come loose once you, once you tighten them up. Um, so it's actually quite a good way of constructing canopy, I believe anyway. Now, as you can see, it's obviously not all bolted together. There are some welds such as, where are we? All of these. So there are sections that are welded, but by being bolted and sickerflexed, it just allows the, the whole structure to basically move a bit more without the welds cracking. So well, aluminium welds can be known to, to crack, especially on long corrugated roads and whatnot. So if you've got a bit of movement in the chassis or the, the frame, I should say, then that's always a good thing, I believe. As you can see, this is a jack off canopy or lift off, however you want to say it. And basically how they do that is they use a stainless steel bracket on each corner of the canopy. They then use these legs which slide up into these three mounting points. And honestly, it is the sturdiest jack-off system I, I've seen. 
Um, we, th this height that it's currently sitting at, we walk in and out of it without it being on the car to work on, on and inside it without any dramas. And it, yes, it, it moves a little bit, but honestly, it's, it's the best we, we've seen. In saying that, what makes it absolutely awesome for its stability also makes it a bit harder to put it onto the ute. So because there isn't much movement in the legs, when you're trying to line the vehicle up underneath it, if you don't get the vehicle spot on, you can't simply just give it a bit of a push to get it to drop into the exact position. So you win some, you lose some in that case. Now, so just to make them go up and down, uh, the legs come with a little tool, which is basically a socket that you then put on your drill, just goes over the shaft here and you can wind them up and down with your electric drill. It also comes with a manual handle, but that would be slow as hell, so get a drill. Now, as you can see by above my head, the roof goes up horizontally, and that's so that you've got plenty of room to walk into the rear of the camper. So at the end of this video, I'll show you pushing it up and pulling it down. But for now, we'll move on to the side of the canopy. So moving on to the passenger side of the camper. So we actually optioned an awning from Tommy Campers. Now, obviously it's a 23-0 awning and it's a 270 degree. So it goes around the back of the camper. Now, I haven't had any personal experience with this. We haven't even actually opened it yet, but I believe it's quite similar to Darchi. And I have a Darchi on my own camper or canopy and I'm very happy with it. So I expect that this will be quite good. Now, Tommy Campers actually offer the stainless steel brackets to mount the, the awning to the camper. Um, they are good quality. Uh, they definitely look very strong. My only gripe with that is that they stick out quite far. I don't see any reason why they wouldn't be able to make new brackets that sit in further. Um, that's probably something we're going to look at doing ourselves just because it, it sticks out a little bit too far for our liking But it's not a big deal So I probably should have mentioned this earlier You can have any color Tommy camper that you want as long as it's white or gray So the color selection is enormous But that's okay. So the parents 80 series cruiser is a dark green which meant that the gray would definitely suit it a lot better than the white. So that's why we went with that color. Now, before we open up the door, we've got a water tank outlet over here. So that's to obviously fill up the internal water tank. And we've also got a tap down here. So now opening it up, just a simple two locks, pull it up, nice soft open gas struts. Now, this is where things start getting a bit different from your typical Tommy camper. So what we did was we bought uh, this basic pantry set up from them. And instead of getting the S8 version, which is longer, it's roughly to here, we got the S6 version. So the pantry or the, the kitchen setup is a bit smaller than your typical S8. And that's just to give us a bit more storage room, I guess you'd call it. So like I was saying, how the Tommy Camper comes in every color you want, as long as it's gray or white, the inside comes with even more color options. It only comes in gray. So if you get a white camper, you get a gray interior, whether you like it or not. So what we did was we bought it in gray, we sandblasted it, powder coated, powder coat it in white. And basically, as you can see, what that has done is just brighten up the whole interior. Now, inside the back, when we get to it eventually, you'll see how light and bright it really makes things. And in my opinion, that's just the perfect way to go. Now, it comes with this little table that folds down. So it's a nice little aluminum table. Probably would be nice if it had maybe a stainless top on it or, or something like that, but it's pretty good. Um, yeah, obviously, it's up-down 
pivoting action of it is really good. Very happy with that. And it comes with this pull-out sink, which is a decent size. It's actually pretty good for washing your pans and whatnot, and it's removable. So you can throw all your dirty water out. Now, once again, as you can see, that's powder coated with gray. Um, we'll probably be leaving that though, but that's all right. So, once again, another gripe that we have with this is that it's on this side. So, to, to us, it just seems to make more sense to put the sink on this side of the table. So, we'll end up just moving it over and that way we'll be happy. So, push that back in, nice and simple. Now, all these shelves, they're all height adjustable. So you've got multiple holes all the way along on both sides. So you can adjust them to suit whatever you want, really. And when you option to buy the kitchen setup, you also get these tubs. Now, I'm not 100% sold on these, to be honest. I kind of don't really get it, but if you want to put your tea bags in it or something like that, if you drink tea, then you can do that. Also good for your free Tommy Camper hat, which they give you. So, I'm sure we'll find a use for them. And as you can see, we're going to be using the Travel Buddy. It's obviously not hooked up yet because we haven't done the electrics, but I run one in my canopy setup and I'm more than happy with it. So if you haven't tried one, I suggest you go and try one because they are fantastic. Now, another thing that we're not very happy with is the fact that there's nothing actually connecting this piece of this upright to the shelf. So as you can see, that just wobbles around. So when you put this kitchen setup up and you put that, it pulls it down and there's nothing really kind of holding it solid. Obviously it hasn't been too much of an issue for other people, but it's just something we're not overly happy about. So we're not just making up a bracket, putting it from this upright to the shelf and it'll make it nice and solid. Now, that's basically where the Tommy Camper um, internal fit out stops for us. So that was the only thing that we got off them basically. The rest we have all custom made. So, all of these panelings, they're all what we have made. They're all aluminium. Some is two mil, some is three mil, depending on what the panel is used for. So this piece here, this is actually just a riser for the upright fridge, which is going in. Now that upright fridge is a Bushman 130 litre. And the reason that the parents decided to go with that is because I have um, I have a Bushman 85 litre myself and we went on a 3-4 week trip up to the Northern Territory together so all three of us were living out of it and it was big enough for all three of us for the whole trip so they decided to go and buy a bigger fridge I don't know um, but they did so the 130 uh, Bushman actually fits in here pretty much perfectly yeah, um, you got a little bit of space at the top, a little, space, a little bit of space at the bottom. Um, it, it works pretty good. So this piece here is how we're planning on attaching the, the fridge to the actual riser. Um, and the good thing about the riser too is that you've then got a bit of storage area under here. So you want to throw your phone to charge it or whatever it may be, you can kind of use a bit of it as a bit of an extra storage compartment, which is always handy. Now, like I was mentioning before, we've got water tanks. So we optioned to get a second water tank. So that's obviously just on the other side. And here's some more gray internal powder coating. Um, now, I think that each water tank is roughly 70 liters. Don't quote me on that, something like that. So by having the two tanks, it gives quite a big water capacity, which is good. Especially if you want to um, start having showers and, and stuff like that. Now this box in the center here, 
So as you'll see soon when I take you through on the inside, it's basically just to house um, a drawer system. So there's several drawers in there. Now, the reason that we've kind of enclosed it at the rear is basically because we're trying to leave as little gaps in the whole camper as possible. So we can leave the side doors open whilst not being able to have mosquitoes and whatnot coming inside the camper when you don't want them. Now onto the electrical system, which is an integral part of a lot of canopy setups these days. So we haven't actually started running any wires yet. We've only got the, the very basics all mounted up, but it kind of gives you an idea of where things are gonna start. So in the center, we've got our inverter. So that's an Energive 2000 watt inverter. And we've also got two 100 amp hour lithium Energive batteries. So a lot of people, they go for one 200 amp battery. We thought about that, but we wanted to try and utilize every, every bit of space inside the camper that we can. And a 200 amp hour battery wouldn't really fit within the, the two water tanks very well. So that's why we decided to basically double stack the two 100 amp hour batteries just to make the storage a bit better. Now, as for the panels here, so that's what all of our electrical stuff is gonna be mounted to. So our, our battery charger, um, all of the fuse boxes, all the resettable fuses, uh, your cigarette plugs, your USB chargers, all of that. So all of that is gonna be mounted to these two panels, one on each side so that you can charge from both sides of the canopy if you wish. So the reason that we've placed these panels where we have in the camper is so that when you put your battery charger and your fuse box and everything like that that sits out from these panels, they don't actually sit out any further than these water tanks. So that's good because there's just less risk of basically accidentally hitting them, damaging them or anything like that. And also by the panels sitting out from the, the front wall, you then have room to run all of your wires behind the panels. So you can make them make the whole system very neat and organized, as well as the safety factor that you're not gonna accidentally snag any wires when you're in there working or, or anything like that. One of the things I absolutely love about the Tommy Campers are these stainless steel scuff panels. So they've got these scuff panels on both sides of the camper, as well as for the rear entry door. Now, the reason I love these so much is because when you're putting things in and out of the camper, obviously you're not damaging all your powder coating. So because they're stainless steel, they take a beating and I think they're just fantastic. Now when you buy your Tommy camper, it comes fully carpeted on the floor as well as inside the camper. And you also get a bit of carpet on the underside of the door which would come in handy I think for if you want to stick like Velcro pouches or anything like that. I think it'd be quite handy for that. And also it gives the, the panel or the door panel a bit of a buffer in case something kind of comes out and hits it. So that's always good for not damaging your doors. That's probably about it for the passenger side of the camper. So let's move on to the rear setup. So now that we're at the rear of the camper, as you can see, to get into the camper, all we have to do is lower this ladder. So to do that, it's just held up by two over center latches, one on this side and one on this side. So we just undo that, lower it down. And before I lower it fully, uh, it comes with these two, I think they're nylon inserts or, or something like that. And you basically just adjust them to suit the height of your vehicle. So whatever the height is of your vehicle, you can just extend these out or extend them back in to suit whatever vehicle height you have, which is a very good idea, I believe. So that just lowers like that. And then you just pull the little latch and the door opens. Now you've got this little kind of rubber stopper holder thingy. So when that opens, it actually locks into here. So your door is fully locked into position and if you get a gust of wind or anything like that, it doesn't just swing on you, which is always a good idea. 
So we'll just open that. As you can see, we've installed a hot water system. So this is a smart tech light. Um, yeah, it's supposedly a good thing. Um, I haven't actually tried it yet, so we don't know 100%, but we're looking forward to seeing how well that works. And it fits nicely on the rear door, which is always nice. So we'll just open that up. There's also plenty of extra area here to put boxes or whatever you want really. You could come up with a million different things for there. Now, we optioned to have a side light here and the switch is just inside on this corner of the canopy to turn it on and off. Uh, also, there's another switch there which turns on and off the water pump. So that's very good. Now, they do, I believe, option a handrail if you want. So if you're a bit elderly or anything like that, and you just want a bit of extra security as you're climbing up and down the ladders, um, yeah, you can purchase one of them, put one of them in. Um, we didn't feel it was that necessary. Um, they come with this handle here as standard. So that, that's pretty good as it is. Now, as you can see, when I'm walking in, I've got to duck my head a little bit to get into the doorway. And that's because obviously the top of the camper comes up, but then it leans forward. So the X models that come with as an option for these, they lean rearwards, which means you have a bit more room to get in and out. So that's that's definitely handy, especially if you're a tall person. Um, I believe that would that would help quite a bit. Now you can get a fly screen from Tommy Campers. The downside to their system is that it clips onto the outside of your door frame. Now the reason that's a downside is because every time you want to open and close your door, you've got to pull your fly screen on and off. Now, as you can imagine, that's probably going to get real old real quick. So what we've done is we've come up with a design where we make an aluminium internal frame that goes around the inside of this door opening, right around from the bottom of the sides to the top. And we then utilize the fly screen that comes from Tommy Campus so that that doesn't go to waste. And that just clips around the internal frame. So the good thing about that is you can then open and close your door without having to pull the fly screen on and off. Now, what makes that even better, other than not getting your mosquitoes and flies into your camper, is that with this hot water system sticking out from the door, we actually have enough room in the doorway now because the fly screen is pushed further inwards that we can fully close the door without even opening up the fly screen. So that's a massive time saver, I think, and it's definitely gonna make life a hell of a lot easier. Now, I'll throw you on the little selfie stick because there isn't much room inside to put a tripod up, so bear with me. All right, so we start off by walking up these steps. Now, I apologize for the lighting in here. Uh, yeah, it's pretty hard to get a torch in here to shine and show the whole thing, as I've discovered when I've been trying to take photos in here. So hopefully you can see it all right. Now I guess we should probably start from the doorway. So this right here is obviously the opposite side to the kitchen setup. And it comes with two little nice cup holders there. Little plastic cup holders. They're all right. Now you can actually see by the construction from the inside of this camper setup. So here's where they sandwich all the, all the top section to the midsection, I guess you'd call it, of the camper. And obviously you got all the appropriate back bracketry and bolts and, and whatnot. So here we've got the stainless steel, uh, essentially large washers on the inside of the camper for the awning. And all your wiring, which runs up into your lights and your roof. Now, all of what you see in front of you and to the right is what we have custom fabricated. Now, on the right here, we've got a seat. So, Tommy Campers actually offer their own seat, but it wasn't high enough to suit the portaloo that my parents already had. So, we decided to make our own, as you do. Now, we decided to make a few 
modifications to what they would have offered anyway. One of them being a couple of doors here. So obviously door opens all the way and then you've got your porta potty that's on the slide and it just slides out. So it's nice and easy to use. Closing that back up, we move on to our other door. So that's basically just a storage compartment. Um, nice little shoe storage compartment if you've got lots of shoes, I guess. Nice place to put them or whatever your heart desires. Now, we've got a diesel heater that we're gonna be running in this. And this is basically just the adjustable uh, shroud, I guess you call it, direction for the fan to come out inside the camper. So that's going to make it nice and toasty inside, I think. Now, this is our drawer system. So as you can see, we've got three drawers and I'll show you what's in the top one. The top one is a table if we can kind of get some good lighting on that. So that's just an alley table made out of two mil and it's quite well suited for, pull that back out again. If you're sitting right there, you can use the table. Um, if you're sitting there, well, you know, use your lap. Um, so I'll push that back in, then uh, try and open this with one hand. Obviously it's going to have latches and locks and all that, so it'll be easier to pull open. Um, everything is a work in progress. So this is our drawer. So that's basically it. Just once again, two mil alley and the bottom two are exactly the same as that one right there. Now, part of the reason that we made this whole front fascia is so that we can have a little bit of a ledge to kind of kneel up on or you can charge your phone up on it or whatever whatever you want. Now when you buy the Tommy Camper you get a stand mattress with it. Uh, you can option I think it's a five inch in a spring mattress um, if you want uh, but we basically stuck with the factory one that they offer and then we've put this uh, kind of egg shell topper thing on it. Um, so yeah, I haven't laid on it myself, but the parents said it seems pretty comfy so far. Uh, so moving on to the roof. Now you can option to get a 12 volt fan. Uh, we optioned to get one and then we optioned to get the wiring put in the other side of the roof to put a second one if we decide later on we want to. So that'll be very good in summer to keep nice and cool. Now for lighting. So it comes standard with these little lights. Now we haven't actually tested these yet because we haven't hooked up power to it. Um, we have heard that they are freaking bright. Um, more on the too bright side so we might end up replacing them with something that's dimmable but that's not really a big deal and so we've got one on this end and then if you can see up that end uh one up that end of the bed as well so that should be plenty of lighting i think for for this small area i say small my head isn't even anywhere near the roof um then we've got these handles. So these handles are what you use to actually pull down the roof. And you basically use your shoulder to lift it up. Now, Tommy Campers do offer an option to, I think it's to basically make the roof lift up and down electrically, but it's like a couple of grand. So if you don't feel like using your muscles, then you can go that route if you have the money but it's really not that difficult to lift up the roof and pull it down. Um, yeah, it's, it's honestly quite easy. So they do, we, we did actually get them to put them in a different location. So I don't know if it's showing up on the camera, I think it is. So you can see the ribs here 
and here. So those ribs go all the way through. Now, Tommy Campers normally put these handles on these front, or well, the next rib forward. But because we have decided to put this in, we requested that they move the handles one rib back so that we can still reach the handles uh, without leaning in too much. And the roof still pulls down perfectly fine, so it's, it's really not an issue at all. Now, we've got canvas all around us, obviously. Um, just walking around. So, as you can see, nice zippers. They seem pretty good quality. Um, yeah, the canvas seems pretty good quality as well. Uh, quite happy with that. And obviously carpet on the roof. A couple of pouches up that end, which would be very handy, I think. I think that's uh, a very good idea, having a pouch up there and on the other side as well. So I think that's pretty much all of the internal for now to show you. So we'll go around to the driver's side and we'll show you what's going on there. Now, moving on to the driver's side of the camper, it's much the same as the passenger side. Obviously, pull the latches, open her up. Make sure you don't hit your door on your roll cage, which is hanging from your roof. Uh, so, excuse the mess, all the tools and shit. It's currently a work in progress, as, as you've seen. So, starting from the very rear of the canopy, we're at the rear now, uh, so this is where the water pump is located, just behind the back wall. You can see the four little bolts going through the wall to hold that up. Now, this is the diesel heater. This is just a cheap Chinese eBay job. So, cheap, but it works. So, the parents used to use this in their caravan, which they sold and have now gone to this. So, it was definitely good enough to heat their large caravan. So I think they might possibly cook within, uh, within this camper, but that's better than freezing your ass off. So then we move on to the porta potty, which you saw from the inside, uh, your storage compartment. Now what we decided to do was put these upright in to support the, the seat. So we didn't initially do that. We made the seat, folded it up, went to sit on it, and we realized that it flexes quite a lot. So it probably would have been okay, but we felt much better putting a few uprights in. So the amount of rigidity that now gives the seat is just immense. Just going back to the diesel heater quickly. I come down under here. So this is the fuel tank, the 15 liter fuel tank that comes with the diesel heater. Now this wasn't going to perfectly suit our setup very well. Um, so we are trying to work out a way to possibly utilize it, but it's just gonna be easier for me to make a brand new tank. So that's what I'll be doing. I might end up doing a video on it. Um, it'll just be a little alley, little aluminium tank. Um, try and get 10, 15 liters in, roughly be the same capacity as this. So that will then be going in this rear section in here. So that'll be behind the diesel heater. So we'll still have a little bit of a pocket in here as a bit of a storage compartment. It should be good. You can never have too much storage. And if you can see from the camera, I don't know if you can, I might do some B-roll of this. Uh, we've put some dimple dies in here. Now, not only does that make it go faster, reduces the weight, Increases the stiffness, just makes it look pretty. Um, so I'll pop that back under there. As you can see, we've got lots of parts underneath the, the camper at the moment. Now, this section here is currently open as you can see, but we are planning on putting, or making some drawers for here. So what we'll be doing is basically making two drawers. It'll be two drawers, uh, it's that stacked on top of each other. So one, two. And then I'm not actually sure what we're doing with this section here. Um, that's for the parents to the side. Uh, we might leave it open. We might close it off as a bit of a storage compartment. Not sure. 
Uh, but that's that's basically it. So there'll be tons of storage on top of both of the drawers. Um, there'll be obviously more storage up here. So we'll put some tie downs in there, probably some cable tracking or, or something like that so that we can just throw a bungee cord over or a ratchet strap or something like that that we can tie lots of things down to. And as you can see on this side, this is our second water tank. So we've got a second fill point specifically for this. Now, each of the water tanks have a little tube going on the outside of them. And that clear tube is basically so you can tell how much water is in each tank, which is very good. It's a nice visual thing. There's no electronics required. Uh, it's basically foolproof. But speaking of water, I've got to mention, we've got another outlet on the back wall, which is what we'll be using to hook up to the hot water system. So that's a nice convenient place on the back wall to have your water. Another thing that I forgot to mention earlier was on the passenger side, between the fridge and the water tank, we're actually gonna be making a pull-out pantry. So that's just gonna be on slide, so you can pull the whole thing out, be roughly 900 long by 300, 350 wide, something like that, depends what we can get away with. And basically that's just gonna house uh, all your cooking stuff, all your food, anything like that. Uh, possibly a coffee machine, we'll, we'll see how that goes. But basically there's gonna be plenty of room all throughout the camper to put anything and everything that we need. Before signing off, I thought I'd also mention that we decided to get a roof rack for the Tommy Camper. So that's obviously an optional extra that you've got to pay for. Now, the reason that we got that is so that we can mount our solar panels too. Now, the solar panels that we decided to go with, they are 260 watt each, and we're running two of them. So that equals a total of 520 watt if you went to math school. Uh, so that should be plenty of power coming into the two lithium batteries to keep them topped up, which will be good for running all the electrics. Well, that's our Tommy Camper. I'd like to hear from you and see what you think about our Tommy Camper build. Love to hear what you have to say about the Tommy Camper in general, about what we've done to fit out the inside of it, about maybe what you might suggest we do in the future to continue fitting it out. Um, just leave a, drop a comment down below and let us let me know, I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to check out more content on this camper, on any of my other builds or anything like that, hit that subscribe button and I'll catch you in the next one.